Crescent City Steakhouse, a true neighborhood restaurant operated by the Voikovich family since 1934, is the oldest steakhouse in the city of New Orleans. Serving only hand-cut, prime-age, corn-fed beef for over 80 years, Crescent City Steakhouse has become a dining destination for both die-hard locals and adventurous travelers who seek traditional, timeless New Orleans cuisine. Crescent City Steakhouse, 1001 North Broad, on the corner of St. Philip, in the heart of New Orleans. Fall in love with autumn with PJ's new seasonal lattes. Our pumpkin latte brings you all the flavors of a pumpkin pie with hints of cinnamon and nutmeg, like your favorite holiday dessert in a cup. And our s'mores latte with flavors of toasted marshmallows, warm milk chocolate, and graham cracker cinnamon is sure to bring back campfire memories. The PJ's Fall Seasonal Lattes, available at your local PJ's only for a limited time. Hey, don't forget my pimento cheese. I'll take it from here. Hey, the guy you're a seat. For the love of palmetto cheese. Good evening, and welcome to a very special edition of Primetime Sports. Hey, I'm your host, Scott Alexander, and do not adjust your TV sets. This is Purple Sequin. I got this at Mardi Gras last year, and I'm going to wear it a lot this coming week because it's Mardi Gras week, and it's going to be a Mardi Gras show. Yep, I'm not in a carnival, but we are celebrating New Orleans Carnival. That's right, Mardi Gras, and we're going to have two very special guests, and I cannot wait. You know the great songs from Mardi Gras, right? Hey, Mardi Gras Mambo, take me to the Mardi Gras. But the one for my money that I love the most, it's Carnival Time! And that's right, that man right there, Al Johnson, Al Carnival Time Johnson, is going to be on the show as a very special guest. And I love this jacket we're going to pop right up there. Al Johnson, Carnival Time all the time and he's going to come on as well as another New Orleans icon a Mardi Gras icon a Mardi Gras Indian and probably the most famous one we have here in New Orleans his name is Big Chief Monk Boudreau he's been a big chief that's only one big chief in each tribe he's in the biggest tribe the Cherokee tribe and he's been doing it for 60 years Monk is quite a treat and I can't wait for him so that's the show but we're going to talk some sports right now we're going to get into it before we get into these musical icons and cultural icons and let's talk about the Super Bowl because it just happened the NFL season is over the two best teams all year were the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles make no mistake about it they got it right here the two one seeds got in to the Super Bowl and what a game they gave us what a fantastic game that guy right there Pat Mahomes wins the game 38 35 and I'm gonna say something they were down 10 points at half this guy when he's down by 10 plus points with a minimum of 20 starts or 20 games like this in his career being down by 10 or more points is usually a death knell for a team. Put it this way, the guy who has the second best winning percentage when they're down by 10 or more points is a guy named Tom Brady, and his winning percentage is 37% when he's in that situation. And Joe Montana is right below him at 37% as well. Brady's 378, Montana 370. Guess what this guy's winning percentage is when he's down by 10 points? 584. That's right. He wins almost 59% of his games when he's down by 10. That's amazing. And he was the MVP in this Super Bowl. He didn't put the passing yardage up, but he got three touchdown passes. They were down by 10 in the first half, and he played an amazing second half. He had a bum leg, and he was hurting all game. And they tried to – it looked like he got hurt and he was going to be out, but he ended up coming back and having a stellar second half. At one point, they had outscored the Eagles 24-3 to in the second half or 21 to three, I should say, and the Eagles got a, a touchdown to tie it up with a two-point conversion, but it was a game-winning kick. But let me give this up for Jalen Hurts, too. This guy played amazing. Three rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown, and this guy we talked about last week, he was picked, most people thought he might move to wide receiver or maybe a, some kind of halfback thing where, where he might just be an exciting player, but he threw that touchdown to A.J. Brown, and he got some rushing as well. But this guy's become a great quarterback. He was second in the MVP race, so we got to give it up to him. 
because there was two kind of fluky plays. He made a fumble, and that was his biggest uh, mistake of the game in the first half where they could have had a huge lead, but it was a fumble return for a touchdown by the Chiefs. Nick Bolton got that, and also there was a, a punt return by Kadarius Toney that was 65 yards. It got him down right inside the five, and they got the touchdown. But, you know, the defense by the Chiefs gave up only, I mean, by the Eagles only gave up 24 points besides those two plays. So it was just a great game. I know there was some talk at the end of the game about how it ended, you know, hey, a penalty. In a normal part of a game, that's going to be called every time. He got held twice, and that guy probably would have caught it. Uh, here's the thing. People were upset because it was at the end of the Super Bowl, uh, and it, it kind of became anticlimactic because they – put the clock down to zero and they kicked the field goal after the penalty and we all wanted a more exciting finish but the game was exciting congratulations to the Chiefs that's their second Super Bowl win in four years and also uh, let's move on to, to LSU basketball women's the women's team this was a battle of the unbeatens you had South Carolina number one undefeated the only other undefeated in the country well that's right Kim Mulkey's LSU Tigers they were number three in the country well they got outclassed in this one for their first loss of the season they went to South Carolina they got beat by 20 they they saw what a experienced team that's always in the top of the rankings can do but keep rooting for these Tigers because they now know what they need to do if they want to advance in the NCAA tournament and, and get to the Final Four and may, perhaps beyond. As far as basketball goes, how about the Pelicans? Remember, they lost 10 in a row. They had all those players injured, but now they're starting to have a little more life. They've won four out of five. They just beat Oklahoma City last night, who was another team bunched up with them in that standings race between like 4 and 12. There's all these teams that are only a few games apart in that range right there, and, uh, and the Pelicans are right now at 7th. They've won, like I said, 4 out of 5, but here's the bad news. Zion Williamson is going to be out for several more weeks. This guy has been a beast when he's been playing. He averaged 30 points in December. He was doing everything on both sides of the field, but on the bright side, Brandon Ingram is back and he's playing great. So, you know, you know, you had some spotted injuries. You know, McCallum's McCollum's been out some, but when these guys are all together, they're going to be great. But right now, it looks like the team they had last year that played the Suns in the playoffs until Zion can get back. And hopefully he'll be soon. How about Kevin Durant? This guy was a disgruntled player in the, with the Brooklyn Nets, and now he's going to a team that looks like it's it's ripe for him as far as being a fit. I mean, ripe meaning like they're ripe to win the championship if they can get some cohesiveness because you got some superstars over there. Chris Paul's aging, but he is still a guy hunting for his first title, but he's still probably the best pure point guard in the game right now as far as just knowing what to do with the ball. You got Devin Booker, who's that the smoothest player in the NBA right now. The guy scores on anybody. He was a teammate of Durant's at the Olympics. And don't forget the big man, DeAndre Ayton. That's a formidable four if they can find so cohesiveness on this squad. And moving forward, I'm going to go ahead and talk about Tulane basketball because these guys, Ron Hunter has been doing it and doing it well. That game right there was canceled last Saturday because the radio announcer for the East Carolina Panthers passed away. But man, they beat Cincinnati in overtime. An exciting win on Tuesday. What a great game. This starting five is golden. I'm going to tell you right now, that's Jalen Forbes right there. The other Jalen is Jalen Cook. In the Cincinnati game, Jalen Cook and Kevin Cross got 27 points each, and Jalen Forbes got 24. You're talking about 78 points. There's Cross right there. What a great performance by this team. They've won 9 of 11. They're firmly in third place, and they've got a few games left before the end of the season. And by the way, in that Cincinnati game, Jalen Cook had a record 14 assists in that game with his 27 points. And how about Kevin Cross? He had 15 rebounds to go with his 27. But Forbes and, and Cook have both been players of the week in the conference uh, in this this month and also you got to give credit to Sion James who was on this show not long ago great point guard there and then Tylen Pope has come on strong the big man has got some skills also LSU loses their 12th in a row I hate to hear that Tigers they're rough they started 13 or 12 and 1 now they're 12 and 13 moving forward the Saints that deal with Derek Carr got nixed he said hey I got the trade I can nix it myself he's going to go to free agency maybe the Saints will get him here a sad day because NFL legend Conrad Dobler passed away some might say a happy day and I say that only because he used to beat up people that that title there is when I was a kid Pro football's dirtiest player. He did whatever it took for his team to win. And guess what? He had two of those 10 years in the NFL with the New Orleans Saints playing with Archie Manning in Archie's best two seasons in 78 and 79. Hey, don't forget the college baseball season is about to begin. We've had all four of those coaches of those six teams locally on this show in the last two weeks. We know LSU's coach, Tulane coach, UNO coach, and Southeastern's coach were all here. And they play this weekend along with Southern and Nichols as well. And hey, by the way, don't forget, I've got Al Carnival time 
Johnson coming up next, followed by Monk Boudreaux. Stay tuned and happy Mardi Gras. Lindsay LaBolto Leroy. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Hey, enough with the sports. Like I said in the open, welcome back to Primetime Sports. And what we're going to talk about this show is a Mardi Gras special. That's right, Mardi Gras is one week away from today, as some people say, the Mardi Gras. As Fat Tuesday is coming up, the parades are going to be happening all week long, all parts of town. I can't wait. But one of the songs you'll definitely hear time and time again is my favorite of all time. It's called It's Carnival Time. Everybody knows Mardi Gras Mambo and Take Me to the Mardi Gras. Those are classics as well. But for me to get me happy and get my feet moving, it's, it's Carnival Time. We got the guy that sings it right here. His name is Al Carnival Time Johnson, and I've been wanting to have him on the show for a long time. We've had tons of musicians, tons of athletes, tons of coaches, but for me, this is one of my more special guests, and I cannot wait. Mr. Al Carnival Time Johnson, how are you doing, my friend? I'm glad to be here, Scott. Look at great. you. Look how good you look. Great, great, great. I'm going to fix your little thing so we got that whole cape effect. Well, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. I'm going to put this up because this week right here, this was on Where You At Magazine, giving them a plug because they did right this week. They put Mr. Al Johnson in their Mardi Gras manual on the cover. What a phenomenal article in here. Pick it up if you can. It's the, it's the month of February. But Al, when they came to you, okay, we know. when they, There it is right there. When they came to you and they said, hey, Al, we want to do a cover story on you, how did you feel about that? Well, I was happy for that. Yeah. I thought it was a great idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. I sure did. <laughs> well, I'm saying, I mean, how old are you right now, if you don't mind me asking? 83. You're 83, and you're still making covers in magazines. I mean, did you ever think that would be the case? Well, I would hope that it would be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, don't we all? Mm -hmm. well, let me say this. When you were younger, right, let's get your background, because what, what I do when the, somebody's here for the first time, I like to get to know them, the audience to get to know them. Sometimes we have repeat guests, an athlete might come again, but the first time I like to get you, did you, where were you born and, and where, how long have you lived in New Orleans? Have you lived here your whole life? Sure thing. Uh, I was born here in New Orleans. Yeah. In 39. Okay. And around that time uh, when I was still in my mother's arms, we moved to, uh, to Houston. Oh, you moved to Houston. Okay, when you were a little baby. Yeah. Okay. And when did you come back? We came back in... 49. Just in time. Just in time. Just in time right there. And literally that song you wrote was only 11 years later, 10, 11 years later. What, what year was that? Carnival time. It, it came out in 60. 1960. Okay. Well, let's talk about the genesis of this thing. Like what gave you the idea for this wonderful Mardi Gras medley song that we all loved? It's like, listen, think about the years. I can do some quick math. That's 63 years ago. And this is still the song that the little kids are, are, are dancing to. This is still the song people my age are dancing to. The song people that are in their 70s and 80s are dancing to. True. I mean, that's an iconic song. What gave you the idea? Well, coming up, uh, everybody was talking about uh, Carnival. Uh, everybody was talking about Mardi Gras. Right, right. And uh, it was Mardi Gras this and Mardi Gras that. And we came up saying Carnival. Mardi Gras is just a day, right? That's what I said. I mean, because I said, this, my family said, same, it's carnival season. Mm -hmm. Mardi Gras is Fat Tuesday on Tuesday. That's right, and they have only two days. That's that, that Lunder Gras right. and uh, Mardi Gras. And the rest of this stuff is carnival time. It's all carnival. Like, <laughs> when does carnival start for you? Do you do all start like two weeks before, three weeks before? Or do you go all the way to 12th night, early January? No, I, I, I start even doing Mardi Gras. Uh huh. I start carnival time even during Mardi Gras. <laughs> during Mardi Gras, do you start it like on Ash Wednesday for the next year? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's carnival time all the time. That's my favorite line. It's carnival time all the time. All the time. If we have that attitude, life's going to be good, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's good for me. <laughs> it's good for you. Let me say, okay, when you're, you're playing around with music as a kid, I mean, let's just say before, way before this, and uh, I know you told me you played a little horn before, you played the piano. Who was it, your influences on the horns? Anybody that, from New Orleans? Well, Satchmo, everybody liked Satchmo. Well, Louis Armstrong. That's right. I guess that would have been the iconic guy back there. There he is right there. Mm -hmm. So how old you, like, put it this way, when Louis was big, and I know he was big for like 40 years minimum. In fact, he played the song when I was married, the wedding song. Uh, but, you know, obviously, what's a wonderful world, what a wonderful world. Um, what, what about him did you love? Well, uh, Daddy was, uh, he was fond of Louie. 
Yeah. And he bought me a trumpet, hoping that uh, I would pick it up and do well like Louis. You played a lot, though. Yes, I you went had to, to do the Army, somewhat well. I went to the Army band, right, on the trumpet. And um, do you remember how many years you played it? Well, I played. I started taking lessons. I remember around eight. Okay, right before you left Houston. Uh, or right around right that before time. Before I went to Houston. Okay. And then you did you 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 said you, you left it for a while. Did you play the piano growing up a little bit too, or did you pick that well, up yes. later in life? Well, Daddy bought. Um, he bought me a trumpet. He bought my brother, one of my brothers, a sax. Uh huh. And he bought one of them uh, a trombone. Nice. And nice. he bought bought my sister's uh, a piano. So he wanted y'all to be in music. Oh yeah, he, he he liked music too. I noticed that when I walked in your your house this morning, you had a piano right in your living room. That's right. See, I love that because mm -hmm. a lot of families I know have pianos. Sometimes it's in the second room. But the ones that have in the living room, and I know a handful of them too, that's when I know they really love the music. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The piano is great. So when you when you were in the army, I mean the was it the army, the, the army, army band? No. Like tell me Four, about the Four Twenty Fourth Army Band. What's it called? Four Twenty Fourth. What's that? Army what band. is the name for? I'm not sure. That was. <laughs> I was thinking April Twenty Fourth, but it might be something you know, better. Four Twenty Fourth Army Band. I, I'm not sure what. Oh, no, it could have been your your battalion or yeah. your infantry group mm -hmm. number. I, I wasn't in the military, but that sounds makes sense. Mm -hmm. But let me say this about the piano, because you're iconic on the piano. Obviously, you have some legends that grew up in your neighborhood on that. Uh, That's true. Who, who are the ones you like the most? Well, Fats, Fats was. Fats Domino? Oh yeah, Fats. I heard of him. Oh, everybody. <laughs> this place right here, WLE, got tons of awards for their Fats Domino documentary. They do I documentaries can here. And Fats is obviously, when you talk about New Orleans music, there's Louis Armstrong, there's Fats Domino, and everybody falls in line, right? I agree, I agree. Tell me what you liked about him most growing up. Uh, Blueberry Hill. No, I liked all of his music. I mean, he's got like his catalog is very deep, mm -hmm. at least 25, very. and everybody knows every word to. That's but right. But like, what did you like about him as a performer? Because I mean, Fats, what I loved, you know, he could win over any audience. It didn't matter. I mean, he crossed over everything. You I could agree. Be, you could be a billionaire in New York City, and you could hear them playing. I lost that's my thrill. That's Blue right, Blue Blue hey, That's a rookie. That's a rookie thing I just did. There's my phone. I don't know. I thought I turned it off, but here we mm -hmm. go. Hey, this is live to tape. That's how we do it. It's live. <laughs> but um. But yeah, talk about like him growing up as a kid. You know, he he had to be one, and he never really left the. Obviously, he passed away not long ago, and he was still in the Ninth Ward where he grew up. And I'm not yes. saying he lived there his whole life. I don't know that, but that's got to say something about being in your own hometown, mm -hmm. your own hood. Like, what did y'all think about him yeah, growing up? Yeah, he loved he loved the Ninth Ward. Did the kids know who he was? Like everybody, was he like one of these people? Like we know Drew Brees, where he lives, and well, yeah, yes, most people, most of us did. That's pretty cool. Because I was younger than him, you know, younger than him, and right, I knew him. Yeah, and he was great. So you're in the, you're still in the ninth ward, right? This is what. Yes. I, now this is I'm what in I love. the upper ninth ward now. You're in the upper. You're in the music music village, right? That's right. So, you came there after Katrina. Is that what happened? Well, Katrina sent me there. Before we get to that. The lower ninth, though, because there's so much pride in the lower ninth. Like the Irish Channel folks, I know they have pride where they grew up, and I love it. True. And and many will never leave. And just like you know, as much as Katrina, that was one of the more devastated neighborhoods, obviously, as we see some shots there, and it's heartbreaking. Um, that, that's probably Big Monk right there. I'm gonna just do this lot. Uh, here we go. Hey, we're on we're on set right now. We'll call you in a second. Uh, just go to the buzzer and knock it in. <laughs> All right. Um, but the fact is, is that. When you're growing up there and you see something like Katrina happen in your neighborhood, most people left and some never came back. That's true. But the beauty of it is that some people did and they wanted to come back. No matter what the neighborhood looked like, they wanted to rebuild and stay there and you seem to be one of those. That's correct. And made it back too. I mean, and glad I, I'm glad I did. I mean, let's, let's talk about this real quick because when you wrote the song, did you write and and obviously you sang the song, but did you write it as I well? I wrote it also, yes. Okay, give me give me your influence on the whole thing. You said because you said it's Carnival Time and it's always Carnival Time, but I mean that that song is not just Carnival Time. He talks about the fun stuff with it. Where'd you get the influence for that? Well, um, I started off with uh, two clubs or joints that that I went to. Yeah, and. Um, 
they were the green room and the plaza. Nice, okay. So I started off with those two, you know, the green room is smoking uh -huh. and the plaza's burning down. All right, burning down the joint? Yeah. Is that, is that yeah, part yeah. of the influence of burning down? Well, the yeah, joint? You, what, I, what I was trying to say that um, the green room was just jamming that a little bit. Right. And the plaza was really burning. That's you know, it was burning. really it's burning. hot, it's yeah. hot in there. So I just, the green room was smoking and the plaza was burning down. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Throw my baby out the window and let those joints burn down. Can you still like belt it out a little bit? I mean, I know we don't have any music behind you. Like, I know people love it. I mean, how you, how you, well, I just how did, chords? you know. Well, I mean, the, no, I'm talking about the, uh, the actual, it's carnival time. I mean, does, do you get that high still with the voice? I mean, well, it's, well, uh, yeah, so. I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just saying, do you mm -hmm. sing it, do you still sing it some? Well, I still do it, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about what you got right here. Cause this to me is beautiful. You brought, he brought three outfits, three capes and three hats. And he brought this beautiful thing right here. Um, what's your influence for these? Cause you got that, that beautiful like burgundy kind of violet one, a little mix there. But this is the one that's Mardi Gras with the owl. I absolutely love it. Okay, you like this one? Well. Because Mardi Gras, it's Mardi well, yeah. Gras. We've got to show people the green too. We've got a little bit of green over here on the back right there. Well, they can see. Oh, there you got it on the inside too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this thing's nice. There we go. We're going to open up that. There we go. And then close it back. I love it. See, we answer the phones on this show. I've never done that before. <laughs> I've done 250 shows, never answered the phone, and I've never opened up a man's coat either. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. Um, but the but the cape is part of your, your thing when you go, when you sing something? Well, usually, you know, usually I, I like the cape. Yeah. And um, for for an 83 year old guy, I mean, you're very you're very spry. I mean, listen, I I have I've had relatives that lived into their 90s, and none of them were really as active as you. I know you don't say you get out much, but you still got it going on. I mean, like you know. Well, I mean, well, you definitely mean well. <laughs> so do you, do you ever get out and perform anymore? Or do you? Because I've seen you recently, maybe not the last year, but a few years ago, you were doing. Well, stuff. well I'm uh, I'm doing some things. Uh, this year, I kind of took off a little bit. Has have people been getting in touch with you since the article came out and where you at magazine? Because well, well, yes, <laughs> uh, because everybody's enjoying that magazine. I noticed. I mean, when I saw it, I go to the Rouses every other day. I live about a block. There it is. And we got some shots from the inside of it where the article actually is. When I saw that one, that's an old Mardi Gras one there too. But yeah, there you go. That's the that's the front of the. That's the front of the article. And look at you, you look right there like you're 60. I'm serious, you look like that. You got those same shades on, I love them. Okay. But you look happy, you got the scepter. Yes. You should have brought the scepter to the set, that would have been perfect. But when they, like I said, we talked to the dessert, but when you're taking these pictures, did it bring you back to like, you know, the good old days when this was like, just. Well, it does. Um, would everything bring, bring me back? Of course, I never leave. <laughs> I stay with Carnival Time, look like year round. Okay, so let me let you know, I called him yesterday and I said something about carnival time. We're talking, he goes, Scott, it's carnival time all the time, just like he said earlier. And I immediately got excited about <laughs> doing the show. I was already fired up, but I was like, okay, he's got the right attitude all the time. How do you keep so happy? Well, <laughs> I work at it. It's important to be happy. You know, it's we ha happiness is a way because it's carnival time all the time. And everybody's having fun. That's the key. Hey, we got seven, eight more days of this, right? That's right. And then when everybody's down a little bit, or maybe you, you might feel like, you know, stepping on somebody's hand when they get a bead, all you got to do is think of the song. Hey, everybody's having fun. They got plenty of beads. They got plenty of throws. That's true. Let's just, but it's seven or eight days for some people, but it's more days for me. It's more days for you. <laughs> right. So what are you, what are you going to be doing in the next seven, eight days? You going to do anything at all? Well... Well, yes, I have a big interest in that um, Red Bean Parade. The, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you're a lifetime Grand Marshal. I just, uh, the lifetime Grand Marshal. That's pretty amazing because that's a fun group. That's correct. And uh, I, I read that yesterday. They said you are honorary lifetime Grand Marshal. I mean, that, that means in per per perpetuity. You know, even when you pass away, they're saying you're going to be the man. Oh, okay. Well, so, I never thought of that. So, so the Red Bean... Everybody that knows the Red Bean thing, that's one of the more fun crews they got out there. So how'd you get involved with them? Well, I remember uh, a lady, Alicia, introduced me to Devin. 
Okay. The founder. Yeah, the founder, yep. And uh, he thought that would have been a good idea if I would be the uh, Grand Marshal for life. Did, so did you go Did you go on a float ever with them, or had that work? Well, we don't use floats. Oh, that's right, the walking. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm in a These are convertible great. most times. That's better than walking. Well, yeah. Do you, then sometimes I get out and walk too. Do you get that scepter, that little thing, like like you're a king, like a grand well, marshal? Well, sometime, yes. You got to have it sometime. <laughs> you got to rule your kingdom if you're the mm -hmm. grand marshal. And that is true. What's your favorite? What do you have? Any great memories yourself of Mardi Gras in general? Like, I mean, when you're growing up, or maybe when you're in your 20s or 30s, anything stick out? Well, it's just so much, you know. Uh, it's just so much. I love that shot of you, by the way. That's the kind of I like. I like the point at the camera thing. You got mm -hmm. the umbrella in the back. Oh yeah. Do these these pictures, like uh, my producer Will is bringing out, do these bring back memories of you? I mean, oh, like, very you remember much exactly so. Exactly where you very were. Very much so. Look at that great smile on that mm -hmm. one. Now that's a scepter. <laughs> that's a scepter. You even got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will he looks like me when I, every time I pose, you put your hands out like that with the umbrella. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Well, it's carnival time, and everybody's having fun. I know. I got to keep this in my mind. When mm -hmm. I have a down day, which happens occasionally, I'm a half glass full guy usually all the time. But you know, if you just keep that in mind, so how do you get so happy? How do you keep that way? Well, I just realized that it's carnival time, and everybody's <laughs> having fun. Everybody at once now. <laughs> it's carnival time. <laughs> And everybody's having <laughs> You're the best. fun. You're the best. Hey, by the way, before, I, oh yes, you hear, that's the other thing I wanted to ask you. Everybody now, it's a phrase. It's carnival time. You see all these things. Everybody's putting it on their, their houses. They put it on their jackets. I know you even had a jacket that said it's carnival time. I mean, when are we going to get some proceeds coming to you? Because this is your phrase. We all know carnival. You can't take that one. But when you put those three, that's even a king cake that's taking it. A king cake called carnival time. And there's even a beer right there. That's taken. It's carnival time. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know all of that. I gotta call those folks over there. I know. I them. didn't know all of that. Yeah, we, we're gonna take care of you on that one. Well, that's uh, good. <laughs> well, that sounds good, Scott. I mean, maybe we should just go right after the show. It ain't far away. We'll go grab one of those Urban South beers. Yeah, and carnival time. Then we'll go watch the show tonight when it airs in a few hours. Yeah, carnival time beer. That must be a good beer. It must be great. You know, <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I think I'm a good one. In fact, I know I will because I know where. The, mm -hmm. You know where that Urban South is. I'm giving them a plug. They're not even right. That's uh, Chapatulas where it ends, you know, right by, past Felicity. Okay. Right when you're going towards downtown mm -hmm. from uptown, and it's right there on the left. Okay. Uh, but that's a, that's a, a spot where people go, and they're one of the better ones. Um, do you ever did you ever like enjoy sports? I mean, the Saints or, or the Jazz? Oh yes. You talk about that a little bit. You remember okay. the old days? Uh, I'm a Saint, and I'm also a Pelican. You're a Pelican too. Oh yes. Now are you old enough to remember the Jazz? Yes. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah. I, went to, I went to the, oh, look at that shot with the Saints. Show that one again. That's that's an awesome shot with the Superdome, which is right behind your head, by the okay. way. Uh, and you with the Saints. So you obviously did love them. Do you have any favorite players back in the day that you remember? Well, I like the Saints, all of them, because yeah. it takes a team. It does take a team. You know. Uh, that's a good answer. Oh, yeah. That's a good answer. It's a team, so I like the Saints. Man, I'm telling you what. You know what else I like? I like giving gifts to people like you, and uh, that's what and I like do. taking them. That's right. We usually, <laughs> usually give one of these, but you know, you don't get icons like you, and we give one of these too. But we're, I'm just doubling up with you today, you and Monk, because to me this is called Treasure Day, and I love it. Now, task performance. You hundred, Scott. You're really a hundred. This is going to be. Uh, Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have made those on my tests in school, but I'll take 100 <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. But uh, no, these are the softest shirts. This is made by a New Orleans guy. And, and I'm going to tell you this. People like Nike Drive Fit and they like Under Armour. This is the best shirt, period. Okay. Like I've said this a million times on the show. This is all Sean Payton wears. This is all, well, I shouldn't even talk about him anymore. He's with Denver. But no, Sean Payton and Drew Brees and Mickey Loomis, the general manager. When I first saw them, I came back to town 10 years ago. They were all wearing it. And I said, I got to find what this is. I came out, I met the owner, we became best buddies. We, he's a former Tulane basketball player. We go to games, and here you go. This is going to be your first task okay, and your great, second task. Great. I got you I got you a couple. I got you a darker great. gray and a black. I know musicians like black a lot. Yes. There we go. And here, I'm going to get you two gift certificates. This is Shays Della Shays. And what I'm going to do for you, if I'll even, if you want to bring somebody, and y'all don't have, y'all, you know, you might not drive anymore, I'll pick you up, and I'll bring y'all. 
and or you know if you want to just go with anybody I'll, I'll take care of you and I'll even get the tip for you <laughs> but there you go those two that, that there's one on St. Charles called Delachaise the other one mm -hmm. is on Maple Street uptown I so appreciate this Al, I, I can't tell you this is a dream for me I mean listen there's not many icons left I mean we know you know Professor Longhair I mean I grew up watching him when I was 15 and I know he passed away not long after that there's mm -hmm. some of these legends that we all know um, and I'm just so happy you're here. I am too. I appreciate you very I much. I am too. And we got to do it one more time. Let's look at that camera and say, it's carnival time. <laughs> Which camera? How about that one? Whatever one. It's carnival time all the time. And what are they doing? Is everybody doing something? It's carnival time and everybody's <laughs> having fun. That's Al right here. You know, we have a tradition. This is going to be the first time we ever do this, but we sign helmets and balls. I've got a bunch off camera too, basketballs and things like that. But we're going to sign this and I'm going to get you a, either a purple one and I put these out somewhere. Here, I'll get you the green since I see it right here. Okay. We're going to do you in green, but this is the first time I brought a tambourine and you and Monk will be the first ones that sign this. I, my musicians have been signing the balls, but I said, I need to do something that makes sense. And I couldn't afford a saxophone as a prop. So, uh, okay. so here you go. We got that. And we got to get you Al Johnson. You'll be the first one. And look at this. This is the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame. And I was remiss not to bring this up yet because oh, I pulled some of this yesterday. I remember that. That had to have been a great honor. And we have you at that Music Hall of Fame. What, do you remember how long ago that was? It was, it was, you've been in it for a minute. Yes, I have. You have been in it. So let's get you Al Johnson in there. Oh, Carnival Time. I like it. I like it. Now I know exactly who it is. Sometimes I can't see the signature years later. I'm like, who is this? But when you put Carnival Time underneath it, that's awesome. That, my friends, is Al Carnival Time Johnson. And everybody's having fun. It is. Well, he's, putting the, he's putting the quotes around. He's making this official. <laughs> I appreciate you, my friend. I'm going to put that up right there. And it's Carnival Time. So we're not, ha we're not done yet. Hey, this is the Mardi Gras show. We're going to continue Mardi Gras in a little bit of a different way. Hey, we got one of the we got the biggest big chief of them all. That's right, Monk Boudreaux. He My is boy. the big chief Mardi Gras Indian, and he knows Al Johnson. I talked Monk. I said I got Al coming. He goes, I know Al. I love Al. Well, he's coming up next right here on Primetime Sports. Yeah. The owners of the Delachaise Wine Bar on St. Charles Avenue have opened up their newest creation uptown on Maple Street called Chez Delachaise, a new local wine bistro featuring a larger menu of small and large plates, a brighter atmosphere, and full table service. Additionally, patrons can enjoy a large patio out front as well as an extensive wine list offering selections from around the world. It's Chez Delachaise, 7708 Maple Street between Carrollton and Broadway. Rock and roll will never die. It's old New Orleans, my oh my. Come on, baby, let's go rock and roll at the city lane. All night, let's roll, let's rock and roll. Baby, do the rock and roll. At the city lane, the home of rock and roll. Palmetto Cheese. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. I'm having so much fun today. What did Al say? Everybody's having fun. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have fun again right here. My next guest, you're talking about icons. Well, he's certainly one right here. This guy is what they call the big chief. He's been the big chief. I wish someone would call me the big chief, but he's been big chief for 60 years plus. That's something else. The Mardi Gras Indians. We're going to get into a little bit of that, but he is Big Chief Monk Boudreaux. And if you know anything about the Indians, this is the guy right here. They all talk about, they all ask for you. Yeah. How you doing, Big Monk? I'm fine, man. So good to see you. Yeah, you're right. And right. you got one of your outfits on. Is that yeah. the one you're going to be sporting this year? This yeah. is just a small part of it. Yeah. So tell me about, look, real quick, because we're going to show some pictures of you in your past ones, mm -hmm. and we'll start rolling those now. 
they're so intricate, right? And and you got the head headpiece, and you got the whole thing. Like, how long? I know this is a basic question. We're gonna start basic, but how long does it take for you to do something like this? Well, since I know how to do it, it takes me about three months. Three months. Yeah. Is this working like every day? Do you take a break off? Every day and night. Well, give me give me the genesis of this because look at you right there. Like that thing, you're, it's head to toe, all the way to your feet. Yeah. How long? I mean, like, you just sew this yourself? I mean, yeah. You, mm -hmm. Is that is that part of what happens? Well, see, the tradition was when uh, I was young, you had to wear your front for three years, and then you make a new front, and then you take that front and put it in the back. And that way you could keep up with my you could mask every year. There you go. Instead of trying to make a new suit every year because that don't happen a lot to a lot of them. You know, some some of them take two years, some take three years. Sure, yeah, sure. They mask one time and then it take them two years, three years. Because the thing is, if you sewing it, you know, because it take a long time to yeah. sew, to be these patches, you know. And uh, I just sit down. What I do, I add on every year. It's not just sewing. I'm looking at how intricate this is. I'm looking at amazement. I, I've tried, I should be looking at your eyes. That's what a good interviewer does. But how do you get the art part right? I mean, this is exactly right. Yeah, well, if I figure out what I want to wear, what kind of patch I want to wear, so I just sit down and take my pencil and sketch out on a piece of canvas. Uh -huh. And once I put it on there, I look at it and then uh, Go at it. <laughs> Go at it. I like your smile, man. Yeah. So, hey, when you, when you, as a kid, like you, you grew up with this, it's in your family. I want to get, for people that don't know anything about the Mardi Gras Indians except seeing them at Jazz Fest or seeing them at Mardi Gras, I want to get the story. And I want to get your story, too. But I want to get, let's start with the basic story. Tell us about the Mardi Gras Indians in New Orleans and how that started. Well, now, I don't know how it started because it go back over 100 years. Sure. You know, yeah. but uh, my dad, man. Yeah. Before I did it, we used to get up in the morning, Mardi Gras morning, about five, four in the morning, wait till him and help him to dress. Oh my God! So and, you helped your dad get get yeah. it all on. And when he leave, we sit out and wait on him to come back. You know, and uh, he come back, and you could always tell. So you didn't have to go outside to see the Indians to know when they was coming. They had bells on it. You could hear them too. You hear the bells. Uh -huh. You know the Indians was coming. They were so coming. We all run outside and see the Indians. Then we go back inside, you know, because it's about five o'clock in the morning. Does this something that every kid in the family does? I mean, I'm not saying your yeah. family, but just in general, do you have a choice to do it, or how does this work? I mean, does everybody well, want to do it? Well, I teach my kids at one years old, my kids and my grandkids at Smart. one. So it's their decision whether they want to keep continue. Some of them do, and some don't. Sure. Which my grandson and my son, they both were nominated for Grammys, so they kept this power and the spirit going. Well, let's talk about the Grammys. I'm gonna get back to, cause that, it's a good segue, because you were just at the 2022 Grammys, you got nominated, yeah. and you just said your son and grandson as well. Yeah. I mean, how does this happen? I mean, I mean that, that had to be amazing. Well, we when we first started out as kids, and with the Wild Magnolias. Yeah, music. Uh, the record company said we were before our times. So they shut us down. <laughs> they said you're before your time. Yeah. That seems like a way maybe to shut you down, or maybe they're saying you're going to be a pioneer. Yeah, so what I did, I just kept on doing it, you know. Uh -huh. Went all over the world because, you know, it was music that a lot of people never heard before, you know. And we was taught as kids, yeah. which I was. And the old people always told me, keep doing what you're doing. Well, t can you describe to people that may not know exactly what the music is, what does it sound like, what's the sound, and what's it, it, what's it similar it's, to? It's, it's like an Afro-Caribbean funk. Right. Yeah. That sounds nice. I know the music well myself, yeah. but I like the way you just described it. Afro-Caribbean funk, so you move your feet around a little bit to it, huh? Oh, yeah. People <laughs> dance, you know, like I, I didn't play it in churches where people got up. Heck, yeah. <laughs> you know, Those are the kind of churches I like. Churches, yeah, so. How was your visit to the Grammys? Though? That's that's not many well, people can say they've ever been there. Well, it was nice, you know. A lot of people were like, I've been all over the world, so sure. it was just what another event, you know. And we had a great time, which I didn't win the Grammys, but I won the best dress. I mean, not everybody <laughs> won. You got the best dress. Yeah. Ain't no doubt about that. Look at you right there. Is that you? Yeah. Okay, it looks like it. That guy looks like a 20-year-old. Maybe my eyes are bad. <laughs> I'm like, you do look good. I mean, I was not expecting you to look this spry. 
I mean, I, I, I promise you, because I mean, I, I saw some pictures in the headdress. I'm like, okay, all right, he's look. But you look, then again, you said, you don't feel as good as you look all the time, right? Yeah, well, just, <laughs> hey, age bring on pain, you well, know, so you just gotta deal with it. You still look good, though. I'm gonna tell you right here. Well, back, back to this yeah. thing, when you're growing up with the, with the costumes. Um, the suit. Well, you call it the suit. I'm sorry. Yeah. My bad. I uh, thank you for correcting yeah, me. A lot of people say costume, but it's well, well sewn. It's well, you know, I Googled it. When I Googled it, it came, when it came up as that. You're right. Suit is the right way to say it. Mardi Gras yeah. suit. So, like, do you, there are different tribes. Mm -hmm. And how, can you describe how many tribes and what tribe you're in? And uh, Man, they have a lot of tribes now. You know, back in the days, they might have had about maybe eight, ten. Right. Now they got 40, 50. Because everybody want to be the chief. Sounds like the mafia, right? They got used to be just those five to eight families, yeah, and man. then everybody comes out here in the good way, the good mafia, not the. But I'm just saying, they, then everybody wants their, wants their little group in there. They got more chiefs than they got Indians. Yeah, that's a problem, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. But I know yeah. the Cherokee only got one chief, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's you. Talk about the Cherokee tribe, which you're in, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and and how? Okay, this is what I'm most curious about. How does one, especially in an established Tribe, you know, not one of these ones that just get three people and say, "Hey, let's get a tribe going." Yeah. Like you, you, you're in the Cherokee. Like, how does one become the big chief, and how does one get one? You say it's early in age too. That's what surprised me. Okay, well, you gotta, you know, you you go through the tribe and you you watch everybody. Okay. And you will see who is doing the most and who is paying more attention to what's going on and who are doing the proper bee work and making his suit look like he may be the chief one day. So That's how I was chosen. So you, okay, you were smart. You looked around and how this worked oh, yeah. and you say, hey, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, you know, very conscientious about making my suits as a kid. So yeah. do you do this like, you do this for like through grade school and through high school too? Well, no, I, then I was like, uh, I liked it art. I liked to draw a lot. Nice. And when I first went to school, I, I passed by the band room. I wanted to be in the band, that's for sure. But when I got into uh, the next grade, they told me I was too young to be in the band. So <laughs> that, that broke my little spirit for that. So then I started drawing and stuff. So I won an award for the best art. Is this all your art too? Oh yeah. This is everything. You, so you come up with the idea. Yeah. And what is, what is your inspiration for the ideas of what you do? Well, I figure out what piece I'm gonna put where, and you know, and I'll do that one first. The key is to once you start on one, you finish it. Yeah. Don't so so you. One piece, out, you mean? Right. Yeah. One yeah. piece, and you figure out where it's gonna go and how big it's gonna be and you don't know how long it's gonna take, so you just gotta sit there and do it. And then once I do that big one, I know how the smaller ones will be easier. So this is just the vest for people watching. This is just one little yeah. piece now, and there you are with the clean it up. But how many pieces, like, do you, do you have? You got the big over piece, that's the big piece, right? The crown. The yeah. crown, the crown, yeah. and the head pit, and all that. That's the crown. The that's the crown, that's what you call it, okay. Yeah. And then how many, you got the whole leg piece, like, it's like got almost a football player. Got the pants, I got the boots. It blows my mind. Really? Yeah. I mean, it really does. So, but as far as being the big chief, like, do you do you say that's a job for life? Well, as long as I want to be the chief. Right. And do you the one that appoints the next big chief? Yeah. And does it ever come from the same family, or do you have to do another family? How's well, that work? Uh, well, with me, it's family. So you keep it in the family. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How did you get chosen? Who? I mean, you told me how because you're conscious. I was but chosen from one of the elders, the older chief, and uh. They, they they kept their eyes on me because I was paying close attention to right. what was going on and what they was talking about. And uh, and my first year I came out, I was 12. Okay. And I didn't do too good, you know. Okay. Because I didn't take my time and do it right. Oh, the costume. I mean, the, the suit, sorry. But the next year, it was right. You blew it up. Oh, yeah. When you turned 13. Oh, yeah. They was ready. Oh, yeah. See, when they see me, they know. Oh, yeah. He got so it. So you became a chief at 19. <laughs> they see me and say, he got it. He got yeah. it down. So you were on your road to becoming chief. Yeah. Like, I mean, put it this way. That guy could have been, what, what, what would happen if he was like only 30, 40, and he had 40 more years? You would never have been the chief. Is there another title for somebody like you that's well, right in there? Well, no. Right. He would have still been the chief. He would say, you know, it's a time where you have to retire, you know, like, my suit used to be heavy, all stone rhinestones and beads. 
and now I done broke it down. Uh -huh. I can't put all that on me no more. No. But I'm going to be pretty. You're going to be pretty. It's going to yeah. be light, though. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to carry around 100 pounds. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, how heavy do they get sometimes? I never knew. You never I know. Never you, just put, you just keep adding it on, <laughs> adding it on, huh? Yeah, if you wish, you might not want to put it on. I want some more history here. Okay, St. Joseph's Day compared to Mardi Gras. What, what are the differences here? Well, St. Joseph was like a, a celebration. Okay. Of, okay. Uh, we made it out for Mardi Gras. And now we worship them in the days. And yep. We, and so that's when we came out at St. Joseph at night. Okay. And we used to run through the graveyard. Nice, nice. I still do that. Why not? <laughs> it's fun. I'm a little weird too. I, I don't think it's weird. I just like to do it. Uh, <laughs> I don't run so fast anymore though. But um, I want to hear more about the music career because listen, I mean, the Wild Magnolias, has this always been part of you? I mean, like, when did all this well, start? Bo and I grew up together. Bo Dallas. Yeah. Another big chief. Yeah. And so uh, Bo had the big voice, you know, and I had the know-how. I knew all the Indian songs. So we got together. And so I'm going to let Bo do the singing because he got the mouth out of weight. Legendary. There he is right there belting yeah. it out. And I yeah, see I you. His mouth is. <laughs> he I mean, it. how long have y'all, did y'all know each other? I know he's passed away, but how long? All have our life. Like, I mean, is he, was he around your age? Yeah, he, no, I was a little older than You're him. a little bit older? Yeah, he, he only lived around the corner from me. Like, how long did he live till? Uh, Bull was about 60 or 50 something, something, 59, 60. That's, yeah, that's my age. I remember seeing his son, which I mean, when I said Bo Dallas, when I first moved back here, mm -hmm. which had been 10, 11 years ago, and I've seen him at Tipitina's and a place like that. I mean, are you, are you in touch with the family at all? Well, I see him now and then. What about your family? Talk about that. Like, the well, you know, my family, we all together, you know, and uh, we live in different parts of the neighborhood, but we all get together, you know. They all come by me because I'm the teacher. You're the teacher, and, <laughs> and once again, like it's carnival time and everybody's having fun, you are the big chief. Yeah. They got to go to the big chief. You said you grew up uptown, whereas, you know, obviously my, my previous guest, Mr. Al Johnson, he was in the Ninth Ward, uh -huh. and you spent a little time in the Ninth Ward, but talk yeah. about the neighborhoods you grew up in uptown. Well, but neighborhood I grew on Second and Drive was a mixed neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a lot of friends mixed. in that area. Yeah, it was mixed, and, uh, you know, we played with the white kids, and they played with us, but we couldn't go to school together, but we all played together after school. Same here. I was in the same kind of neighborhood. We played. Yeah. Well, and uh, it, it was a neighborhood that where everything was peaceful, you know, and then later on. It got crazy. Guys started coming from other neighborhoods, the little peaceful neighborhoods, and turning it upside down. They messed it up a little bit. Oh, yeah, well. Yeah. But yeah. you're still kind of not far from that. Aren't you around Valance in that, that area right there? Yeah, I'm uptown. Um, like, what's a typical Mardi Gras day, like, for Monk Boudreaux? Long as it don't rain, it's a coup. <laughs> so what? What? Like, tell me, do you get? Do you all get up at four and five still? You nah, do that? No, I might be, be uh, go to sleep. We stay up. You stay up. That's <laughs> the way to night, do it. You yeah. stay up. That's it. Uh, uh, one year, I think it was year four last. I had a time to go to sleep. Other <laughs> 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 than that, ever since I've been massing, but all night, night full Mardi Gras. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like me getting ready for the show. Yeah. I did a lot of prep. I didn't get any yeah, sleep, yeah, right. but you I had fun. So, but you could, how long can you make it to Mardi Gras? Do you, do you oh. make it? It used to be Comus was the, the, back in the day. Now they don't have that nighttime parade. Do y'all yeah. end it at six o'clock or do you keep going all through the next, that six Tuesday night? Six o'clock, we, we ended at four o'clock because they always have a big party at my house after. Okay, but that's yeah. but that party is that party in then or is it just kind of get started? Oh no, the party go on. That's my point. It goes on yeah. to Tuesday night too. Okay. Yeah, people come and eat and, and drink and have fun at the party. Sometimes it be one o'clock in the morning. It's still out. <laughs> on two, on Wednesday. Yeah, they full. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I like your smile, man. Yeah. I, you got you got this infectious smile. I like it a lot. Um, girl, going from here, like, how soon do you get ready for next year? I'm just curious if this is a process that goes well, year round. It all you depends see. on like uh, some people say they start right after Mardi Gras. I you got to recover a little bit. That. Yeah, I don't believe that. Yeah, but I start. You know, when I feel this door's getting close to that time. Then I was always on my mind, so you know it's just a matter of me doing it, you know. And once, because once I start doing it, that's what I'm gonna do.
Right on. I ain't doing nothing else but sure. that. Oh, so when you get it, you're, you're hyper-focused yeah, when you when start. I, when I feel it's the time, right. that's when I so get So what it. about those other eight, nine months? What's, what's Monk doing? Yeah. Don't worry about it. I go fishing. Fishing? <laughs> yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. What, did you do, besides music, did you do any other work when you were growing, when you were in your, your 30s, 40s, or was it just music? Well, or I was a house painter. Painter, nice. And I had a choice. Either you're going to go out, because I had some time I had to leave, and I leave, you know, my crew there. When I come back, the ladder's still where I left them at. So they I didn't said, do much. No, they, they didn't, didn't do much. Nothing. You know. <laughs> so then I had a decision to make. You know, I say, well, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna. Well, I was making good money painting houses, you know, but absolutely. But music was me. So I say, well, I'm gonna give up the house painting. And I call up the people that I work for, and you know, on their houses, and tell them that I ain't gonna be able to do it no more because I was always recommended from one to another, you know, friends. Let me say this. What's, what's the Mr. What Man? Uh, tell me that again. The Mr. Stranger Man. I gotta hear a yeah, little more Mr. about this. because Mr. Stranger I, Man. <laughs> you gotta watch The Stranger Man. Tell me all about it. I wanna hear it. It's like, uh, it happened with Bo and I, you know, uh, the manager. He kind of separated us. Okay. Because he was in for mostly for himself. And he figured I was smart enough to know what he was doing, you know. And uh -huh. I was telling Bo. And he was telling Bo something else. So he had to uh, separate us to, you know, to really get next to Bo so he could make the money. Right. Yeah. And so what he did. But they, they wasn't getting rid of me. They was making me more powerful. Right. Because right after that, I went in the studio. That's my turn now. <laughs> and I'm going to let it out. Why was he trying to separate? Just for because, money? Yeah. That's it? Yeah, because he knew I was smart. Right. And to the, I knew all the songs, and I knew, you know, about the music. I learned about it, and I know what they would do, you know, if you don't know. I'm gonna say this: You're an amazing man, and and I want. When you first said you've been around the world, I've been wanting to ask, what what years did you start traveling around the world with the music, and what are some of the uh, great places that you remember going? I think it was in the '80s. I'm not sure. Right. About 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, and uh, after we did the Wild Magnolias record, uh, the record company said we was four hour times. So I did a record, and that was my time. And I went all, matter of fact, I went all over the world without a record. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, how did they know to hire you? That's, curious. That's an issue. Well, question. you know, people come to New Orleans and they visit all the time, and I was playing at Jazz Fest all the time. And, uh, and a friend of mine was a college professor. He said, Monk, he said, look, the people are going to be coming after you. Right on. He said, because they didn't hear about you. He said, you just tell them what you want and they're going to get it. That makes sense. Cause there's a bunch of Jazz Fests here. What's your relationship with Jazz Fest? I mean, like, you, do you do these every year, these recorded lives? That are, what, year, what year did you start doing that? Day one. Early 70? Day one. Wow, so you've been doing it nonstop for yeah. the whole, oh, wow, 50-plus 50, 50 yeah. years. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. So every year? Every year. That's pretty cool. So how did you meet my friend over here, Ingrid Lucia, right here, this book? Uh, She's Probably. the one that got me in touch with you. I got to give yeah, her some props. Well, you know, like musicians, we always run into each other somewhere down the Isn't line. that the truth, though? <laughs> yeah. Because I've had, I've had several dozen on this show, and then, and sometimes they'll come at the same time, and they're like, oh, yeah, man, did they give me a few weeks ago? I'm like, I didn't know y'all knew each other. Oh, yeah, well, in New Orleans, you know you always uh, run across uh, I'm gonna I'm going to show this book real quick, because this is a book that just came out. It's a memoir, but, hey, it's called The Big Time. And she is big time. She's sitting right over there, and she's a beautiful woman. And this tells a, quite a story in the back. All these 13 albums right here. Check this out. This is a quality book, too. Check that. Do the big time. And I thank her for getting me in touch with you. And David Brinks as well. I want to thank him as well, the guy that owns the gold mine. Uh, he's a good friend, too. What's the craziest place that you had a set around the world? Like something crazy that happened? Mm, 
Nah, I can't never see that. What's your favorite place that you went? Like that you didn't well, think you might like? I liked in New York a lot because it reminded me of New Orleans. It does. You know, something always happening all the time. See, you like me. You like me. <laughs> I don't like the cities that sleep. Yeah. Go to the, Indianapolis, they sleep at 11 o'clock. I'm like, yeah, what's going on here? A lot of places. I mean, places. that is no fun. A lot of places. Yeah. That's, After a certain hour, it's over with. I'm in you know? sports, so every time there's a Final Four or a Super Bowl here, all my friends in the media are like, why can't they do it in New Orleans every year, at least every other? the year because you go to these other places I mean yeah. New York's different right yeah but even some of the bigger towns they're like they're shutting down at midnight right. I'm like what's up with look at right. this face <laughs> yes yeah, so this is face he's like right <laughs> you're right I say my man likes tonight I like it too um, so any other country that you loved uh, Japan was nice yeah, I've been to Tokyo six times. Yeah. You, did oh, yeah. you go to Tokyo or other places? I've been there about four or five times. Yeah, that's been, nice. Yeah. First been time's a little culture shock. All though. over Japan. Oh, everywhere. Nairobi, yeah. everywhere? Okay, yeah. that's nice. Well, listen, brought some gifts. I'm, I'm the, the, the man that drove you, Mr. Flowers. I'm promising him a double X, but I don't have it right now. I didn't know he was coming, but I got him. Okay. And, and if you're around, I know where he lives. So I can find it easy. Oh, you right there? Oh, I got you. But I got you too. This is unusual. I got you and Al too, because y'all are icons. Yeah. And I just was, I'm very appreciative on this yeah. show. And also got, not just that, we got a couple of these too. So, oh, you're right, but Della Shades. You could use this down the street. Yeah. Like literally down the street. <laughs> this is Shays Della Shades, but okay. the same guy, Evan, is a close friend. He owns both of them. One is on uh, Maple Street, that's Shays. Yeah. And this one, Della Shays, is also right there on St. Charles and Della Shays. Right. You're right there. So I'm going to give you that. That, that should get you through a meal there. That's okay. a nice two. And then we'll get these shirts, man. I want you to feel it. Right. I, I didn't prompt him to say anything. No. You feel that real quick and you tell me how that's going to feel in your body. That's bamboo cotton and that smooth. is the soft. It's smooth. Yeah. I'm telling you. Every time somebody puts one on, they never. Put it this way. A lot of people have had them, like the Drew Brees of the world. They're like, I got, I got 50 of them. Yeah, you know, we had the LSU coach who had his first one last year because he was new, and then he came on again. He got, he goes, I wear this one all the time. Yeah. I said, you know, you can go online and get one. You don't have to just get them here. Yeah, but the fact is, they're great. Yeah, I appreciate okay. you. This has been a pleasure for me, sir. Okay, man. This is Big Chief Monk Boudreaux. Yeah. I can't wait to see you. If I see you out, I'm going to give you a little look. Yeah. My man's saying, Tom, we got to go. I could go all day with you. <laughs> oh, sign, yay, sign. So here we go. This is what we do here. I started this without you're going to be the second person on the tambourine because I even had the musician signing balls, but it's going to be my honor to get a big chief, Monk Boudreaux. Y'all check him out. Yeah. If he's part of the Cherokee tribe, he's a big chief. There's other, there's other big chiefs out there. Some of them are cool. Most of them aren't. But, I mean, I'm just kidding. So there's 40 or 50 of them, but this is the biggest one right here. And that's our guy, big monk. I mean, big chief, Monk Boudreaux. I want to thank him. I want to thank everybody. Hey, Will. Unbelievable job back behind us right there. Logan and Alex, you too. And everybody yeah, here man. at WLAE where they do a lot of documentaries. Maybe the Indians might be coming up. Will, is that something that's in the, in the hopper? Because they've got a lot of Emmy Awards. They just won one for Irma Thomas's. Uh -huh. Do you know who Cheap Blackhawk is? Who? Cheap Blackhawk? Yeah. A friend did a, did the documentary on him. We got to get one on Big Monk right here. But they've done one on Fats. They've done uh, Alan Toussaint. They've done some big ones because we like the icons here mm -hmm. at uh, WLE, and you're certainly one. I appreciate you. That's Big big Chief Monk Boudreaux. Check him out at Mardi Gras, St. Joseph's Day. We're going to run it through some graveyards and check him out. Hey, next week, we're going to be coming back. We're going to, I'm on the music train right now. We're going to take a week off from Mardi Gras because that is on Tuesday, right? But we're going to come back on the 21st. We're going to talk all about what's going on in the sports world. I'm going to have a couple more musicians in the next few weeks after that as well. Hey, thank you again for watching Primetime Sports. See you next week.